Something I really looked forward to with the Unity 2018.3 release was the new physics upgrade that they rolled out. Like for instance now, rigid bodies can detect and collide much better with colliders. And we can also create trajectories super easily compared to before where it was kind of difficult. But obviously there are so many more exciting news that I want to share with you guys. So in this video, we're going to check out the blog post that Unity published for the physics 3.4.2 upgrade, which they basically upgraded recently with 2018.3. And this is basically going to be one of those chill videos where we just sit down, relax, and I have a gameplay video in the background or some random footage. All that while I show you guys the blog post. So yeah, I'm not going to waste any more of your time, but before we get started with the video, I just want to mention that this video is brought to you all by Alchemy Studio Music. As the name suggests, Mario from Alchemy Studio Music is a musician who publishes his music on the Unity Asset Store for you to use in your games. Some of his assets include the free music and SFX collection pack, the rock stingers pack, monster sounds, and fantasy bundle. He has rock bundles, orchestral fanfares, and just so much more. So as you can hear, they're all high quality and game ready, and personally speaking, like throwing away the fact that this is sponsored, I really do like the menu music packs. I think his sound quality is really good, and Mario himself from Alchemy has got an insane amount of experience as a musician. So as always, I'm going Going to leave links to him and a few products that he has worked on in the past in the description box including his asset store page so make sure to check him out and say hi from the Saiku community. Also I would like to give a huge shout out to Richard Stance, Kupla, Flu Joey, Beard or Die, Makeagame.com, Catch Ferret, Gilherma Leandro, Academyofgames.com and Terrorrift.com. Thanks to your support on Patreon along with Mario for sponsoring this video obviously I'm able to make more content for you all. So now with that being said let's Let's jump into the video. Yeah, jump, like, get it? Because it's a physics video, like, like, like physics, right? And you jump. Okay, so the physics upgrade included a bunch of new stuff, and I thought that we could get started by taking a quick look at the blog post that Unity published. We're only gonna spend a few minutes on that though, and then we'll jump into Unity and use a couple of the new features that they published to demonstrate how you can use everything new and shiny. So Unity led their post by saying this, quote, Physics 3.4 is a big release that brings visible improvement in a whole bunch of various ways. Firstly, it addresses a significant amount of bugs. For instance, it significantly improves convex to convex collision detection and feedback so that there are no more odd bumps from the ground when the PCM collision detection is enabled. Secondly, the physics engine now saturates the threads with physics jobs much better. Broadface, collision detection and the solver were rewritten to be decomposed into as many atomic jobs as possible. As a result, you should see the time that it took to simulate the frame to be lower than before. And thirdly, the physics curious module is now up to two times faster than before. Another huge update is the brand new support for multiple physics scenes. Now, if you're confused, don't worry because I was too. <laughs> so basically, they used to have only one physics scene that was populated with all the bodies and colliders from all of your Unity scenes. So that means all the physics related stuff you see in your scenes used to happen in one physics scene that was simulated. Now, unfortunately, that was quite limiting in some some cases, so Unity say this, quote, there are particular cases where this is limiting, so we have now enabled you to create multiple physics scenes. With that change, you can now specify whether a given Unity scene uses the default physics scene or needs its own local one. The extra scenes are just like the default one with the exception that all the usual physics APIs will ignore them because all the scenes are created completely independent. There's a number of ways to use the extra scenes and you can simulate them with physics scene.simulate on any frequency. And another interesting option is to create an invisible physics scene to predict trajectories. This improvement is available to both 3D and 2D physics, that's what Unity say. And we're actually gonna create a trajectory system for a demo in Unity using multiple physics scenes. So that's gonna be a tutorial actually, so stay tuned. They also support more batched queries now as they say this, quote, batched physics queries is a way to run physics queries off the main thread. This API is needed because one can't execute the usual API from another thread. In Unity 2018.1, we shipped raycast command.schedule batch 
that helps to compute raycasts off the main thread. In Unity 2018.3, we're extending this to add the other single result queries like sphere cast, capsule cast, and box cast. We're figuring out the technical limitations that prevent us from exposing the multiple result queries like overlaps and sweeps for future releases. So clearly, they're still working on this and researching to figure out the limitations that they currently have, but I believe we'll see some really cool stuff pretty soon, hence this update in 2019, and I'm really looking forward to the new updates. They're also enhancing determinism, saying this, quote, Physics guarantees the same simulation result when all the inputs are exactly the same. However, many things are considered input from the perspective of the physics engine, and one such thing is the physics scene itself. Before 2018.3, it was impossible to destroy the implicit physics scene, so the original one. One could only destroy all the objects in it, which formally wasn't enough. With multi-scene physics, this is easy to work around. However, another frequent issue was that adding a new body located somewhere far away and seemingly not interacting with other objects also had the potential to change the simulation outcome. That was because of the way physics in Unity grouped objects internally. This is now possible to overcome by enabling a special option in the physics settings. It's not free in terms of performance, but it shouldn't slow your project down significantly. I like the fact that they are very straightforward with this kind of stuff and super transparent because you can use this and kind of expect that it would be pretty much free for the performance, but they are telling you like, hey, it's not free, it's not gonna have a big difference, but still, just keep in mind that it might slow your project down a little bit. On top of that, something else I really like is the brand new continuous collision detection for the rigid body component. Now, if you haven't used Unity for a while, or for a long time actually, you might not know about this, but something that people were pissed about before was how you, if you shot a small object at a high speed, at a high force, sometimes colliders would simply ignore it and let it pass through them, even though it was meant for the object to get stuck on the collider or maybe even like bounce off of it or whatever it might be. So the collider just didn't detect the collision at all. And now they have actually solved that problem. So Unity say this about the issue, quote, continuous collision detection has been an option in Unity for a while. However, the linear nature of the process was a common problem. All it did internally was to sweep the body some specific distance forward along the velocity vector to compute the time until next hit. This model didn't allow for rotation support. The simplest example of a game where that's problematic is pinball, where the flippers rotate fast while not being linearly moving at all. And this is actually a demo that we created for Unity when I made the official video for Unity, which is also going to be linked in the description. But so they say, this is no longer a problem with the alternative continuous collision detection algorithm them added in the 2018.3 release. It works by inflating the contact offsets that affect the generation of contact points. It generates the actual contact manifold once the objects are close enough according to that inflated distance. The predictive linear sweeps are no longer used in that mode, so it tends to be more accurate by detecting overlaps with all sorts of bodies being rotated or moved in a fast manner. This is really good because I was really looking forward to this. I really wanted to have this feature and like they said I mean games like pinball really suffer from this kind of issue so before ending this video though <laughs> without talking too much let's also get into unity and check this continuous collision detection out or like check out the continuous whatever you know what I mean <laughs> Alright guys, so here we're in Unity and I just have a Unity 2019.1 demo open actually, so this is a scene created in there. And in this demo, I only have a ball, a first person controller, which is the player, and we're using a few assets for this environment from Cinti Studios uh, Battle Royale Pack, so the Polygon Battle Royale Pack, the link in the description if you guys want to check it out by the way. Not sponsored, I wish it was, but <laughs> here we are. So. Basically, using the C Sharp script, I simply add a little bit of force, a little bit, yeah, a little bit, sure thing. <laughs> I add a lot of force to this ball that we have in the scene. And using another script called shoot, I basically spawn the ball every time I press my left mouse button. So I'm adding this in crazy, in crazy, yeah, in crazy amount of force. i uh, gonna say insane and crazy at the same time, but in crazy amount of force because I wanted to travel through these crates to showcase how it works. So if we play the game, um, you're gonna see that we can just kind of like moving forward in front of these crates. And if I shoot the ball, 
you can see that it literally just travels for a little bit and then you can't see it anymore because the crates are in front of us. So the problem here is that the collision on the crates pretty much don't detect this at all. So to fix that, we can basically go to the ball and you can see that in the rigid body component, we have a field called collision detection. Now from discrete, which is the default option, you can set it to be continuous speculative, which is the new option and then go back to the scene and play the game one more time. And now if we start shooting, you can see that every single ball is being being detected by this collider and you want to see something funny this is actually incredible so I the, the crates don't have any colliders by themselves so I basically created a cube and look at how thin this cube collider is or box collider is look at this like it's literally nothing it's super thin and still because of the new collision detection system that they added it basically detects all of the balls, every single one of them with no issues. And now one more thing that I wanna just quickly mention before ending this video is that this is actually, the speculative collision detection um, is more useful for rotating objects. So they even have a little demo and also the one that we created for Unity, the pinball demo, is a super good example of how to use this and what it's super good for, uh, what it's useful for rather. So that's like the full extent of it. But I couldn't actually figure out a demo for this video so I decided that I could show the, show you this um, and also the unity video that we created kind of shows that anyway so I didn't really want to like recreate the demo just for one more video because I thought that it might be a little repetitive for you guys because I think most of you have already seen that video because it's me <laughs> but if you haven't I'm gonna le leave a link to it in the description obviously so you can check it out it's really good uh, like a three minute overview of the new continuous collision detection and one more feature whereas this video is a little bit more of an overview of the whole thing that they implemented and the entire upgrade to physics 3.4.2. All right, so that should give you an idea of how the new physics system works in Unity and what kind of new stuff is going to be coming out. So they have rolled out all of these new features. So if you want to check it out, download Unity 2018.3 or later and try them out. I also want to make a video on creating trajectories using using the new multiple physics scenes setup so or support because I'm really interested in that kind of stuff. So if you guys want to learn about that, let me know in the comments. Comments. And as per usual, if you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more, make sure to give it a thumbs up to show some support and hit the subscribe button below the video to, to stay up to date for new videos. What am I saying? And apparently YouTube doesn't send a notification to all the subscribers because obviously subscribing is not enough in 2019. So turn on that bell notification icon too. We also have a Discord server, which is going to be linked in the description. And it's basically a server of like-minded game developers. And we're reaching 10,000 members, which is insane. I think we're at like, 9,900 members. I never know the number. If you've been watching my content, you'll know like, oh, it's Sam. He doesn't know the numbers. Now, with that being said, I'm going to be super active in the comment section and in our Discord server. So I hope to see you guys there. So thanks for watching and have a good night. Peace out. <laughs>